Hello, my name is Anna Zaccia and I'm the curator of Short Riga International Short Film Competition and the whole program Short Riga actually, that is part of uh, Riga International Film Festival. And today uh, I'm uh, going to have the pleasure uh, to uh, talk to some of the directors from two of the competition screenings that were screened uh, online yesterday. Uh, you have the possibility to ask uh, questions uh, closer to the end of this session and those I would uh, like to be asked in the comments of uh, this Facebook live stream. I have an assistant, uh, one of the selection committee, Dita Abola, is there. She's waiting for your questions. Please feel free to ask them and uh, I will get those on my phone. So I'm not just sliding the phone, it's, it's actually your questions I'm waiting for. But uh, so, getting back to the directors, I'm very happy to see you uh, in those, all of the, oh, uh, I see that Ariane has a summer behind her and Paulius is probably, I hope you're not, uh, uh, steering the car. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> it's great to see you all. Uh, and uh, thank you for the films, of course. And uh, I will start with uh, the competition screening that was labeled uh, slightly lost uh, um, and uh, with the first uh, film done by uh, Shoko. And uh, I guess for those who have seen the film, it's clear that uh, people search for love in various places and it doesn't matter where it's uh, it's a special need and uh, we all need it and you found those great uh, characters and uh, I can see your connection to the film how uh, you stumbled upon this uh, topic uh, but I would like to ask you to unmute uh, introduce yourself and uh, also uh, already answer uh, my question about uh, how you found uh, the other uh, characters because I understand one of them is your friend uh, how you convinced them to take part and how how did they react to this idea yes hello I'm Shoko the director of the film just a guy this is an animated documentary short film about uh, love and obsession um, to a serial killer, Richard Ramirez. And um, I, yeah, you're right, the, the second character, the red hair character is uh, one of my friends and I know her since I am 15 years old, I guess. And um, she was already in touch with Richard Ramirez um, 2010 or something and it was well known that um, he has a fetish for feet and for Asian girls and she calls herself a death row inmate supporter so she wanted to make him a favor and to entertain him and ask me to join her photo shootings and um, back then I was 21 years old and I was very naive so I just said yes out of curiosity and um, yeah then we took pictures together and she sent them to him and then I I received a letter from Richard Ramirez and um, I asked her if she wants to um, talk about her relationship with Richard Ramirez for this film and first um, she was uh, she didn't agree um, immediately because um, uh, she wanted to keep the private intimate um, stories between them and um, yeah and after I actually wanted to make a film about his widow Doreen Leoy um, but she hates her so she didn't want to be in the same film but after it was uh, clear that um, she won't be involved um, the widow um, she agreed to talk with me and the other character um, Eva um, I read about her in the book Philip Carlo um, the Night Stalker that um, she is the, she was the first girlfriend for the first seven years uh, of Richard Ramirez 
and she is kind of well known in the death rock scene um, from the 80s and 90s. So I just read her, um, wrote her on Facebook, and she immediately said yes because um, she had uh, a bad reputation about it back then. I don't hear you, sorry. Oh, can you hear me? <laughs> ah, yes. Great. Uh, so in your film, you are not taking any position or any, uh, there is no judgment and uh, this is what I love about the film. And uh, uh, so uh, I was wondering, uh, how, how did you, why did you uh, decide to make uh, this film and what was uh, like the pitch of the film and uh, what is the reasoning behind the fact that you want this to be seen by the audience? Uh, yeah, uh, maybe can yeah. you tell about this? Um, yes, um, it was very important for me to not to judge. Um, bec um, yeah, uh, but I consider to research in both direction, um, just to not take sides, like saying that yeah, these women are crazy and I'm not, or um, and it was also important to not to glorify um, Richard Ramirez or his crimes and I uh, was very struggling about it and uh, it was a very hard work during the uh, production um, to, to decide or um, it's not easy to not to judge actually when you make a film and when you're also involved in this film and um, but I wanted to show the fascination um, for serial killer and um, not about him uh, itself because there are a lot of documentaries about him and there are also a lot of true crime documentaries but I wanted uh, to understand this woman and their psychology and um, just to show how, how it is and how it was back then and um, get to know him also um, what kind of woman they are and um, and I figured out that there is not that much difference between um, uh, normal love, I would say, or maybe a toxic relationship, maybe. Um, because what Richard Ramirez and um, uh, the women uh, behave or how they behave is um, yeah, almost similar with the, the normal relationship outside, not in, only in prison. So I was very fascinated about that. And um, yes, I think, did and I answer the question? Yes, you did. You, you did. Uh, and uh, you succeeded, uh, <laughs> I believe. Uh, uh, and I uh, I think there is only one thing that I would like to ask. Uh, it's uh, about the visual concept, about the style of the film. Uh, is it the... I haven't seen your previous work, so maybe you can tell if it's uh, the style you do always or how did you work on the visual concept? Yeah, I usually don't work uh, or don't do stop motion. Uh, it was the first time and um, I like, I like to um, try different techniques and um, if I, um, in the last, late, uh, last project I used 2D techniques only and, but it didn't fit uh, somehow. So um, there, in this film there are two stop motion styles, like the past part and the present part. And in the present part where the woman um, read uh, the letters and talk um, together. Um, there, I chose realistic puppets with original eyes of the protagonist to show the audience how they look like, what kind of women they are, and also to protect the, the woman because they wanted to um, be anonymous. And in the past part, uh, I chose those ugly, slimy, more abstract uh, clay stop motion to express complex emotions um, because love can be really positive but it can become also toxic or ugly 
Thank you. Uh, so now I would like to go on. Thank you, Shoko. Thank you. Uh, and thank you for thank the you. film again. And I would like to go on with uh, Paulius. Uh, are you? Ah, yes, you're here. Uh, and uh, the Golden Flask. Uh, so you Hello. are yes. one of the two directors, right? Yes. And we have to connect the other one. He, 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 he has a problem with connection. Can you help him somehow to get Yuri um, here? Dear, uh, no, it's not possible apparently to reconnect him. Uh, but uh, maybe we can start talking and the technical department can try to solve this problem. Yeah. So you will have to start talking alone about this film. So yeah. I do have uh, a, a question regarding uh, the motivation on this film. Uh, just to remind, uh, The Golden Flask uh, is... Uh, is a documentary uh, and uh, it, uh, the main characters are in uh, Lithuania, right? And you yeah. have spent a lot of time with them in their uh, own habitat and uh, apparently these uh, people are, uh, they have uh, some troubles with alcohol as I can see in the film. And can you tell about the motivation uh, and the choice? Uh, how did you find uh, these people and why uh, mm -hmm. you wanted to make a film about them? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so we, we, with Jurgis, we were working on another film and we, uh, we, were, we went to borrow electricity, you know, to, to, to plug the cable to the place. And, uh, and Jurgis said, hey, it's a nice place, take a look. And yeah, and, and we started to talk with these guys and, and the idea came to, to make a film about them. And uh, we, came one day and we started to shoot and we, we we didn't have an idea what the film should be what what, what it is about but it came later and uh, i think uh, we spent uh, like uh, 20 shifts in in their place in five years or something and yeah and that's how this film happened so you were shooting the film for five years? Yeah, I think so. We started in 2015 or 16. I don't remember. Now. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so uh, you are also the DOPs of the film. Oh. Yeah. I, I didn't hear anything. Oh, sorry, I will repeat my question. So, uh, who was the DOP of the film and uh, how did you come up with this uh, beautiful image? Was it um, given by the environment itself and uh, how did they react to uh, cameras? Because it seems like they have forgotten about you there. And it's, of yeah. course, this is what you need in the documentary, but you seem to be very close to them. Yeah, we, we started to shoot with uh, two cameras, like two photo cameras. And later we borrowed a uh, uh, professional camera uh, from a well-known Lithuanian director, Sharunas Bartas. And uh, we, uh, when Jurgis was filming and I was pulling focus. So it's, uh, uh, it, it was shot like this. And yes, uh, we were very, very close all the time, and it's a small flat. It was difficult to to be here, and but we did it. And the, the guys are, especially the, the main character. He's a good actor. He doesn't care about camera. So the way he is. Okay. Uh, then. Um... Maybe you can uh, tell about uh, the fact uh, you have been shooting the film for five years, so probably you have enough footage for a feature. So how did you choose the main? Uh, because there, there seems to be uh, there seems to be uh, this moment. It, it doesn't feel like five years. It uh, really <laughs> feels like uh, one evening uh, in their lives. So can you can you tell how did you manage that? Uh -huh. Yeah, the, you know, me, me and Jurgis, we are not uh, cinematographers, we are not uh, editors of things, but, but we, we did everything together, just like uh, uh, 
everything from uh, starting to shoot till post-production, it is a job of two people. And uh, we are not really specialized in this thing. And we edited like uh, the best uh, way we could. Maybe some other editor would uh, make a longer film or something, but it is how it is. <laughs> yeah. So basically, your main goal was to show these people to, uh, well, to tell, just to show these people to the society, or uh, w what was, uh, how did you I feel about I... the audience? Uh, of this I film. don't know. Uh, the interesting thing in you, you know the film is shot in one place. It's like it it is about uh, this place and it uh, the atmosphere. It uh, to me it, uh, it it is similar to Dostoevsky and atmosphere of small place where uh, some poor people are talking a lot. Uh, this atmosphere is. Uh, the most important thing, I think, uh, not to show them to uh, like to, to show these persons, but to show like uh, I think Dostoevsky has said it uh, somewhere like uh, beauty uh, environment, like uh, in a even in, in a place like this, and uh, in in the the things of uh, the, the lives of these people are like. Uh, uh, very difficult, but uh, inside uh, the the main character inside is uh, very calm and yeah, and and uh, it's about the inner beauty and uh, like uh, beauty of a place, yeah, <laughs> beauty of a, of this human being. Yes, I can only agree with that. It seemed like, uh, I don't know, um, a painting coming to life. So uh, this was uh, one of the reasons why I wanted to ask about the DOP's work, because uh, it's a beautiful image. And uh, I enjoyed it uh, very much. And I believe also uh, the audience uh, will enjoy uh, or has enjoyed sorry because it was yesterday <laughs> uh, and uh, it's a pity we could not add uh, uh, Jurgis but uh, I believe you still have uh, quite many screenings ahead and people uh, will find a chance to talk also to the uh, second director so thank you yeah. for for your answers and uh, thank you for the film thank you, thank you. for actually being in this competition as well and uh, yeah i think we have to head on to the next uh, next uh, program uh, and the directors from the next program um so <laughs> thank you paulius uh, so uh, uh i would like to uh continue with uh, the program called not the usual uh, and I guess uh, this uh, title uh, is uh, not uh, that important, <laughs> but uh, this program contains films that uh, took a little bit of uh, brain work to decipher at some points or uh, films that are uh, actually uh, referring to uh, uh, text. Uh, and using images that are not referring to text and it was a uh, very complicated uh, let's say work that the directors have done so i would like to start with uh, the film uh, the last name of john cage and uh, we have the director margot is here can you introduce yourself hello everyone my name is margot i'm french i'm actually right now in a Parisian Cafe, so I'm very sorry for the loungy music at the back. Um, and um, yeah, I direct, uh, direct documentaries and uh, I'm also an assistant director for an experimental format here. And uh, I have seen uh, also, we have screened, uh, I think, uh, the films that you have done before. And it seems to be uh, 
a for uh, formula that you use uh, is to have a voiceover and uh, to have imagery of uh, of uh, surroundings and this time you uh, went even further can you tell a bit uh, about how you decided to work on this uh, re reference to john cage yes <laughs> so um to say it very briefly the the way i always work is that i always start with sound um and then i make i, re I record sounds and then i make some kind of a sound film and then i shoot the images and uh, so um, this is what happened with the, the John Cage film. Um, and just to describe the context, context in which it has been made, um, it was during the lockdown, as you might have understood uh, in the film. And I was following a seminar about, uh, that was called uh, Limitations as Trends. And we were invited to make a film in one day. And that, that was the limitation. Make one film in one day, and it has to be five minutes long. And uh, obviously, uh, usually I make films about other people than me. <laughs> but in this context, um, I happen to be the, the main character of this film. And, and I just uh, started with a text that I wrote, um, where basically I, something that was silenced during this lockdown and that I had to go through. Um, I, I wrote it down and then I, I decided to, to, since it's very intimate, to create some kind of a framework around it um, that explores the idea of silence and its contradictions and the fact that a silence can be experienced as something really loud, actually. And this is why, um, um, this is why John Cage, because he has made this, he has made this um, cult uh, piece that is called 433, which is just silence. For the way he describes it is that it is real life and, um, and so silence is, is real science. Okay. I don't know if the connection is good. Is it good? Can uh, you hear me well? Oh, yeah. Okay. I guess, uh, yes, there were some uh, uh, logging of the video there was, but uh, we heard yeah. everything you said. Uh, so just in case if this uh, appears again, I will ask you to switch off the camera. Maybe that helps. Uh, but uh, let's try to continue with the image. Uh, so it's, it's an in interesting... Uh, uh, connection there that I noticed uh, and I don't know if any other people would uh, have said this to you but do you feel there a connection with fake news and uh, trends of today when what you see is not actually uh, uh, what I don't know if you... sorry uh, I lost you after fake news but I think I see where you're getting <laughs> okay uh, well it's very interesting you say this because um, in order to talk about something so difficult and intimate, I really didn't feel confident, confident with taking a, a, the voice of a narr narrator, you know, who's very um, straightforward and uh, dramatic, let's say, because the, the, the topic is. And that's why I decided to use... Um, um, a voice that you can't really trust and someone who says things that you can't really trust and uh, and also it's also because I experience I mean we experienced this a lot but I, especially during the lockdown uh, I felt that I was completely covered by news and that you know you spend your time <sighs> trying to figure out you know <laughs> what is uh, real what is not and trying to deal with all the emotions that they generate to you and um, and the character that I played uh, that I play in the film, the narrator, to, to come to this story is definitely uh, playing with the spectator and, and creating a, a, a doubt about the truth, about what's been said to finally come to a point of uh, truth. <laughs> Okay, uh, I guess at this point, uh, uh, this is it. Uh, no, uh, I, uh, maybe you have something else to add to this film? Because I, I believe uh, that uh, it's all uh, in the film. And in this case, uh, I don't have much more questions. It's, it depends on this uh, audience, how 
they perceive it. The only thing was the fake news connection for, for me yeah. to ask. And if you don't have anything to add, do you have? Oh, um, it's funny because I was just thinking, uh, because it's the very first time that my film is uh, shown and seen by people that I don't know. <laughs> so I was thinking, you know, um, what questions you could ask. And I was thinking if you would ask about the image, because, yeah, it's I made this film like it was something that came out, but it was really not intellectual. Uh, I was it just made it like that. And I was thinking, OK, if I have to say something about the, the image, so it's that um, um, uh, can you hear me well? Because I yes. hear some. Oh yeah. Okay. Great. Okay. Good. Thank you. Um, one of the limitations that I decided to give my, myself uh, to represent this feeling of being locked down and clustered and, uh, is that uh, the camera. I put the camera in one place, um, and it did, all the shots are shot from the same place, um, and it's shot within uh, the twenty minutes of blue hour, what we call in French uh, between wolves and dogs um, and this is the moment of fear if you understand I mean from the story uh, that I'm sharing it's the moment when day comes tonight and um, so yeah that, there's why that's why the camera is representing both this stillness and this uh, transition from light to darkness yeah. <laughs> that's it well, that is a beautiful addition actually and it gives uh, even uh, uh, more value to the film now it's great that you mentioned that i encourage the other uh, filmmakers in this q a to also add if you feel like that uh, i'm not asking the right questions <laughs> uh, okay. thank you very much thank you margot uh so now i'd like to continue with gabrielle and uh you have made the film with a very long title can you introduce yourself? <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, my name is Gabriel Bummer, and my film is Push This Button If You Begin to Panic. Yes. <laughs> well, that. <laughs> so <laughs> please just uh, tell me uh, are we in your head in this film, or this is uh, actually an imagined uh, character, or it's a very personal kind of film? Um, may maybe all three. Uh, the story certainly started um, from some personal experiences and those personal experiences originally um, surrounded an MRI scan, a medical scan. And that very long title was actually something uh, that was said to me. And I thought in the moment that it was the most beautiful sentence that I'd ever heard. Um, but then also I was inspired just by speaking to friends and family and how everyone seemed to have this connection to weird healthcare stories. And, and some of those friends and family um, work as doctors or within the medical system. So it was also interesting to get, to get their perspective. Okay. And uh... Uh, I I wonder uh, because uh, this is uh, for me also I guess the first time when uh, I see uh, uh, maybe I have seen but I haven't noticed your name before uh, so is it uh, the uh, the type of animation that you use uh, usually or you s chose this uh, uh, visual concept for this story especially because it works perfectly so I wonder. Thank you. Um, yeah, it was developed for this story specifically. Um, for those who have seen it, you'll have noticed that it's white on white mostly. It's paper on paper. And the idea from that came from the MRI scan itself. Um, MRI is completely white on the inside and the way it scans your body is in layers. And so I thought it would be nice to um, try and animate the whole thing in layers and, and to keep it all white as well. Um, and from there, I was further inspired by an artist called Ben Nicholson. Um, and he has these white relief pieces, which is also white on white. And I thought since the protagonist of the story has kind of an unusual illness, he, he lives in, in the shadows a bit. And so I thought, it might be interesting to tell the story with shadows because as it's just white paper and white paper, what we're actually looking at is, uh, is shadows. Um, and actually, I don't know how easily you'll be able to see, but here's, 
here's one of my characters. <laughs> so very little made of paper and mostly analog in that way. Okay, thank you for this answer. So uh, this film is uh, uh, produced uh, this year. Are you working on anything new? And uh, I guess uh, it's a very personal film uh, in a way, uh, and also uh, it's a personal experience for to everybody. I mean, uh, I have uh, also many fears and many panics regarding uh, health uh, uh, issues and uh, all those. I have been in this MRA scan as well, and my nurse uh, said uh, that this is going to be like flying in a spaceship. Don't worry. So <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> my next film is going to be this is going to be like flying in a spaceship. Don't worry. I like it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's, this, this is where I'm heading, actually, the next, uh, the next project. And uh, can you just a little bit tell about your background? This is what I was trying to also get yeah, from the sure. question before. Um, so my next project is, I don't know if it's going to be a short film or a series of short films. Uh, it's going to be called Bruhaha. I was very inspired by a story I read about these devoutly uh, religious uh, miners who outside of the mine have this very um, close-knit community where they um, um, practice uh, a very devout form of Christianity, but then they have a, a pact that when they go in the mine, they worship the devil. Um, and I thought that was kind of a, a fascinating example or maybe exploration of um, how maybe commerce um, can change belief. And so I'm going to work on that a little bit, but I'm, I'm not sure yet how long it's going to be. Uh, um, then my background uh, didn't start in film. Uh, I used to work as a management consultant and then became a painter and a musician. And my first work animating was uh, making music videos for for my band and then now i'm making films okay thank you uh at this point yes we're fine there is uh, not not uh, no questions uh, from the audience uh, so we can continue thank you gabriel uh, thank you i would like to uh, now continue with uh, the film they salivate Ariane, are you ready <laughs> oh you are on mute darling please <laughs> can you can you unmute yourself yeah here here i am do you hear me Yes, we hear you. Can you, can you, yeah. uh, can yeah. you? Um, can so you? I'm Ayan Bukesh and uh, I'm the movie director of The Salivate. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, I'm not uh, on my, uh, at my home, but uh, I'm very pleased to be here. Uh, this film uh, was one of those that we had to, um, <laughs> We talked uh, for for a while with our uh, selection committee because it was uh, yes because it is uh, for those who have seen it it's a very uh, physical uh, experience not only a visual experience and uh, I was actually wondering uh, mm, how did you work with the actors and how did they react to this uh, uh, idea and uh, can you tell about all the saliva thing how complicated was that to be made in a film actually it was kind of complicated to do i thought this movie would be very easy not very easy but a kind of easy because this is on the same flat and uh, there's no traveling or anything, but uh, it was very, very hard, very tense to do. And my actors was uh, kind of friends before I shoot it, so they knew me, but they were kind of surprised by the story. 
and by what I wrote. So, but they were completely happy to do it. So they never been afraid to do anything. My, my actress or my actor were completely uh, agree. They really want to do it that way. It was more me uh, who was afraid to ask them to do that uh, than us, actually. But it, it was very painful to ask to someone I love to kiss each other, to, to, to be violent, to spit on them. It was very, very not, uh, it was very hard to me to ask them that. But as I really want to shoot that movie, I, I need, of course. And I do, I do it. And uh, this film was very hard to do because uh, there's plenty of, um, of challenges because uh, the last scene was of course very very difficult to shoot uh, with the water and uh, um, it was very very hot because we shoot during the the summertime and uh, as we we were shooting for the day it was very hot in the in the place and the the mood was very tense, and maybe the films is better because of that. But for the shooting was very hard for all the team. And um, when I direct my uh, my actresses, I I want her she will be very very slow because at the beginning I wanted uh, I wanted to have like a very slow and calm rhythm and with the film uh, it's getting more uh, intense and more quick and more uh, uh, without um, um, the rhythm will, will go on and after a while it go down like something very fluid like the like if the water will move on and go back to the calm. And, it was, uh, and can you tell, uh, can you decipher the film a little bit? Can you tell about the meta message there that you intended? Actually, uh, I, I had this idea of poison kiss. This old couple, I wanted them to be uh, not a new couple, not me, me, and not, I, I want them to have at least 40s and uh, I want we can feel imagine they have passed together a long time years and at that point when the film begins we can feel that the end this is the end of the relationship and the the actresses know the the main character she's she knows that and he, he doesn't want to see it. And this is, there is this last kiss, she forced it and she can't swallow it anymore. So she threw it away. And I kind of read uh, dancing things, uh, the spit would be swallowed by someone else. And the desire, the wrong desire, we spread all outside of the couple for, uh, you know, break it from the, from the outside and inside maybe too. This is, uh, I wanted to, to wrote, I've never have a, wrote a story or a short with any sentences. And for me, the speech is, is a kind of language, a body language. Uh, and it means something this woman uh, has said something to her husband, maybe, uh, by this kiss. And uh, this is not a sentence, but maybe there's people who can, can feel it from the inside. Because of, I think this is, a, of course, a, a movie really organic. I don't know if I answered to your question. 
Look, yes, of course you did, <laughs> and uh, I, I'm wondering uh, so um, about the the reactions of people who have seen it. This is the part uh, I'm really sad about that because uh, just after the first projection, there was the lockdown, and my short, especially especially my short, need to be uh, screened uh, because. You have the public relations, uh, public spectators, you know, the spectator react for the screening. And when I first show my, uh, my, my film to people and I know, uh, they react a lot. And I love that. I really love that because uh, they, they were discussed uh, or uh, they, are, they have very strong re uh, reaction. And for me, it's good. It's something uh, I wanted to have. And uh, this is not the same to see my short online. And maybe you, you can say to me how it happens in Riga for the screening, but I'm very curious if uh, people have react for, for the screening. No. Yes, I, uh, I will try to give you the feedback because it was an online screening as well in here. But I yeah. see now that we uh, thank you, Ariane. Uh, I guess so we have to uh, head on to the next. Uh... Thank you to you. Thank you, Riga. <laughs> thank you, Ariane. Uh, I see that uh, uh, Katarzyna has joined us. So uh, uh, before uh, the last project, uh, the last film uh, done by Lila Pakalnina, we will still have a chance to talk uh, about the blue smoke uh, done by Katarzyna. Uh, can you introduce yourself and uh, the film a little bit uh, and uh, straight away also answer uh, how you found the character? Uh, did she want to make the film or you needed to convince her? And uh, yeah, and then I will have just a little bit more questions. Hi guys, nice to see you. <laughs> it's such a bizarre, bizarre situation. Um, I met Irena in the most unusual way. Uh, I actually, I was just walking by the street and I saw already a lady sitting in a in a shop. Uh, she was selling white curtains, so she was sitting behind these white curtains. Her hair was white. Everything around her was white, and then she. And I entered the and I entered the shop and I said to her, I don't know why, but I think we're gonna make a film together. And she thought I'm really crazy. Uh, and then uh, coffee after coffee, uh, she she started telling me her story, and her story was also happening completely in whiteness with all these uh, very very peculiar, colorful explanations. So it's, her story is, is 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 incredible, is tragic, but also is very empowering, at least for me. But for me, it was most of all a story of the power of internal poetry. I don't know why, but I feel that she has that the capacity to to tell the world in a in a in a way that makes you survive everything. I don't know if this is understandable for you, but like if this is if this is clear what I'm saying, but. But this is the feeling she 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 gave me. She really didn't want to make this film, and then she was like, "Ah, why not? What have we got to lose?" So uh, the story basically is uh, what we see in the film, right? Uh, or there's a, a little bit of fiction there as well, in in her story. Uh, can you can you just remind us the story for for? And then we will find out if it's uh, all true in, in the film or there's something you left out. Well, the, the story story, you know, the life story is as follows. She, in the 90s, when the Polish economy was a nightmare, she was working in a, in a factory where they were making waffle makers, this machine to create waffles. And it was not a very safe environment, so uh, a lot of women working there got sick, very, very seriously sick. And her sickness was not diagnosed for many, many years, but in the, as an outcome of this situation of this, you know, getting these fumes into her organism, she lost her memory. And... She remembered very vaguely some 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 things, some whiteness, uh, some blue smoke around her, and uh, slowly, the time of I think twenty years, she recovered. 
but it was of course a, a horrible experience and these people who, who who caused these sicknesses were never never in any way persecuted Nazis in Poland were really pretty horrible and then but you know the only deal I had with Irena which which I loved uh, is that she said I don't feel my life is a sad life is sad and I said I don't want to make a sad story I feel that you are a you are a fantastic character. <laughs> I don't want to make a dramatic story with you. And she said, "Okay, so if this will not be, if this will not be sad, but we can do everything you want." And I said, "Okay." And can you take rakes and rake the sky? She says, "Yes, I can do that. I can most definitely uh, do all the crazy things uh, if I don't have to cry about my life." So, who chose the red dress? Was it her, or it was you? Because that's a beautiful scene. She, uh, we basically at some point asked her to to just to just go and buy the most uh, the that dress she would love the most, <laughs> and she did that. And she she chose the shoes, she chose the dress, and she really dances like this. I, I find her fantastic. You know that this is this is, she is this kind of a person. This really shows her extreme power. Thank you. I like her a lot. <laughs> was... I like this. I like. I like her a lot. I I guess uh, after watching the film, also the audience uh, fell in love with this lady. And I wonder about the sound design. How did you uh, decide uh, decide on uh, these uh, sound design uh, uh, special uh, special moments in the sound design with a lot of chatter or laughter? I was actually, I, I really, I recorded the first conversation with Irena, I think seven years ago, and then I was sitting on it for years, and then one day I just sat down and I, I decided this is not a story, this is a poem, she is in a way, for me, she is a poet, so I have to edit her like you edit poetry, so I did the first cut of this sort of uh, more poetic, rhythmic, energetic uh, uh, way of telling this, this, this story, but again I say more of a poem, and then I asked uh, uh, my friends and great sound designers, Katarzyna Szczerba and then uh, Martina Nagy, to, to add the, the music, to add the quality to the sound. So this was this was super important for us that her her way of speaking, you know, and her the way I hear her maybe <laughs> becomes the main one of the main things in this in this uh, film. Yes, and uh, it worked perfectly, at least on me and I believe on the others as well. And uh, yeah, I guess at this point, if you don't have anything to add, uh, uh, I would uh, like to continue with Loyola. Uh, Katarzyna, how do you feel about adding something? Um, thank you for screening the film uh, in such strange uh, circumstances and hope to see you one day. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Me too. <laughs> I've missed talking to you as well. So yeah, thank you for the film. And uh, now the last but not least, Laila Pakalnina uh, is also taking part in uh, international competition with her film, The First uh, Bridge. And uh, we had, uh, she was one of the lucky ones to have an actual uh, live uh, screening on the big screen at the opening of uh, short uh, Riga section at Riga International Film Festival. And you already told a beautiful story behind the film. I guess uh, I don't have much uh, to ask rather than to tell us how did this this film came to life and uh, please do mention uh, the old rears and uh, everything. Um, hello, uh, I'm Lila. Um, so um, yeah, uh, this. Okay, I will tell about. I I just need to repeat what I what I already. <laughs> I, I already told uh, on uh, premiere, but um, because it's, it is a story behind this film, it's how it came to, to life. Uh, so um, my husband suddenly found, uh, by the way, under the table and not in fridge, uh, reels uh, of uh, negative. And this negative, uh, film negative, not used not uh, exposed uh, uh, it it was it came out that, that those are forgotten uh, 
forgotten cans from uh, my first uh, feature film, feature fiction film. Uh, so, uh, and we did shooting of it in uh, 1997. So, and we found this, this negative in uh, 2018. So, um, 21 year old negative. We contacted lab because we were curious. We, we, we said to ourselves, if, if at least we, we can do something, uh, we will do, we will, we will shoot. And um, uh, we, we made a test and uh, yeah, like, uh, like, like <laughs> today it's so, uh, this popular saying, the test was positive. <laughs> So, yeah, in our case, it was uh, like wonderful. Um, it was really, uh, really, uh, it survived. In fact, it survived in uh, bad conditions. Uh, it survived. And for us, it was this like uh, wonderful feeling that uh, film is uh, eternal in a way. We don't know what will happen with our digital uh, discs and uh, everything, but, but film is eternal. Maybe we are lucky because it was uh, black and white negative. Uh, so it survived and we decided to make short. And, um, and, and, one, and then the decision was, uh, okay, let's do documentary short, not uh, fiction. And this is how we started to make film. And then we were somehow thrown back uh, like uh, some 20 or more years back in the way how we were shooting because uh, it just the like, camera we were shooting on was so very loud. Like when I, it, it was the same feeling when I was a student and uh, and worked on this very loud Russian camera canvas. We had the Arflex, but the Arflex, which was not uh, meant for um, uh, sound recording at the same time. Uh, so um, and and it was like this that when when we were shooting. Uh, our uh, sound director was recording something somewhere else and then he came to the place where we were shooting and yeah that's it okay and uh, can you tell how did you choose the the yeah how did you how did you figure out uh, the the subject uh, uh, of this uh, well film there is a it, it seems like it's there is a storyline uh, at least in my head uh, <laughs> uh, i see uh, that it's not just an observation um in a way uh, i will i will start from uh, end of your uh, question i i very much uh, agree with uh, like previous speaker that uh, uh, when we speak about films it's it's uh, like much and if we if we use genre of uh, literature to compare something then then also for me it was easier to not easier it was more obvious to think about film like uh, poetry not like story and it's for me it's always like this but uh, how we choose what to shoot I, I had in mind this bridge already for some time, uh, even before we, we before we found uh, our footage. But um, uh, and then we came back to this bridge, and we and we we understood how we are going to to shoot it. In fact, it's. Uh, um, for me, it's not so easy to talk about my films because there is nothing rational behind behind them. Uh, this everything is so um, it, it, everything is so intuitive. Uh, 
but but of course like to, to have more um, let's say fun and at the same time at the same time just to keep ourselves in, in some uh, uh, in 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 like in stylistic in un united stylistic for all all this for all shots we created um, for um, uh, ourselves uh, and we even posted on facebook that <laughs> we created this um, uh, direction of um, let's say uh, film uh, which is called agricultural constructivism and when uh, and every morning uh, when we went uh, for shooting we said that uh, we need to make uh, compositions um, for um, uh, Rochenko not to be ashamed for us but uh, we added to constructivism this word agricultural so because we we had uh, always uh, some some plants or some bushes or something in uh, in for uh, in foreground um, and um, yeah that's why we called it agricultural uh, con constructivism now you uh, several times mentioned we and uh, this is something important that maybe uh, well others don't know you do work uh, uh, together with your dop on this film so it's a it's a uh creative collaboration right and uh how are the decisions made are they are they made together or you fight a lot or a, i don't believe you fight a lot <laughs> is a, a great dop so can you tell about this uh just uh, to to those who don't know uh your uh, uh, dop um we we studied together with gints in uh, moscow um uh, in uh, yeah in moscow film school of geek and uh, this this uh, how we get to know each other and uh, we worked uh, since my first uh, we worked together since like very very first uh, films since student works um, but it doesn't mean that i i always work with him and he and that he always work work with me but um when you start uh, in so early age and when you create your own rules of filming filmmaking uh, so uh, then it's easy and then you always say <laughs> we and of course i can add also at first we were two now um uh, when the years passed we already three we 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 are uh, almost always work with the same uh, sound director Andre Skrenbergs as well. Thank you, Lila. Uh, we have, uh, thank you for your answers and thank you for the film and uh, yes, just uh, thank you. And we have some questions from the audience uh, to Ariane. Uh, are you still there, Ariane? It looks like, uh, yeah, well, maybe, yes, you're still. Yeah. So basically, I, I am trying to sum up all, all these questions in one because we don't have uh, whew, Much time. more questions appear. OK, let's try. Let's try to answer these. So uh, dear Ariane, uh, about the film They Salivate, uh, so uh, a lot of questions about disgust. <laughs> uh, uh, so is there a yeah. border to things uh, uh, she wouldn't uh, uh, well you wouldn't want to uh, or dare to include in a film and uh, what uh, uh, provokes uh, uh, disgust in yourself and then about uh, what was the objective for the film to provoke disgust <laughs> so can you try <laughs> to sum it up uh, and then yes yeah, yeah. of course uh, for me, it was very important to make a very bad, tasty movie because uh, because it deals with desire and, of course, it, it deals with sex and uh, maybe there's uh, attraction and repulsion. It was very 
uh, important to me to mix the two of them in my movie, to make something also beautiful, attractive, and uh, disgusting, completely repulsive. And I want to provoke the two reactions at the same time. It was really important to me for that, uh, because it's the end of a relationship and maybe her husband is disgusting her, maybe not. Maybe this is the beginning of a new desire for someone else. And maybe the, we don't know if, uh, if there's, there's always attraction and repulsion in, uh, it was very important to me to keep that in my movie. But uh, I okay. don't know. If... Uh, uh, <laughs> now uh, there's one more thing. What is your like border uh, of uh, disgust? Uh, what uh, uh, what would you not dare to include in the film? There, there are two questions mm -hmm. regarding this. Session. Yes, yes, because there's not uh, any sex scene or uh, violence. Really, violence. This is just uh, something with the uh, saliva. And uh, the saliva is really, really something we we can discuss more than a, in another in an horror film when you see the brain who go out of the head and stuff like that. Uh, this is your person, but maybe less than swallow uh, the saliva of someone uh, you don't like, you don't love, because. When you love someone, you you don't you are not at all uh, you are not at all um, disgusted by it. And actually, when we are looking the first kiss, uh, we he's very uncomfortable, but you're not disgusted. It's just uh, a bit violent. You can feel it's not. Uh, this is a strange kiss because this is the end of a relationship. But this is not disgusting as when uh, we can see uh, after swallowing a kiss, the saliva later. I, I don't know why, this is something really deep in uh, ourselves. Uh, what is saliva? Uh, this is something very, very personal and uh, to share it with someone else, it's, it makes very uncomfortable. And uh, to saliva, it's to commune with someone also. There's these things, but I'm always the uh, center on saliva. I don't know why. I have something with that. Thank you, Ariane. Mm -hmm. And there's one mm -hmm. more question for uh, Shoko. Uh, so, uh, uh, how do you think, uh, which is the thing that fascinates uh, these women uh, in uh, criminals? As many famous criminals have uh, had a bunch of women who admire and defend them? Yeah, I think there are um, different things. Like um, in, in the case with Richard Ramirez or with um, Sarah, the second red hair protagonist, is that she is into this SM, SM or BDSM stuff. And um, she wanted to have a partner who is really uh, dangerous like really, really dangerous and not just acting like you are um, a dominant guy. Um, then I think the other thing is this uh, the control thing that um, uh, many women um, got disappointed in their past with uh, men. So um, guys behind bars, they are trustable for them because they cannot escape. They are not allowed to touch other women. They are not allowed to um, have sex with other women. And uh, you always know where he is and he always answers and because they don't have anything to do uh, behind the bars, right? Um, uh, just answering the letters. And so, um, yeah, you can count on them somehow. So I think that's a, a control thing from both sides, I guess. Thank you, Shoko. So you. with this, I uh, will conclude this session. Thank you, uh, Gabriel, Margot, Ariane, and Katarzyna, and Shoko, and Laila, and Paulius, who is gone already.
Thank you for still sitting here while others are answering. <laughs> and uh, I know the Zoom fatigue will hit in very soon to you, so let's stop before that happens. And thank you for the films. Bye. <laughs> Bye, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.